Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the episode 36 of Anime on Draft. I'm your host, Rolando, joined by my beautiful co-hosts, Alec. Hello, everybody. And Drewfus. Dreyfus. Kawaii desione. Um, Isn't it Dreyfus? No, it's, it's a mixture now. Um, oh, it's Drufus now. Yeah, it's nice. Drufus. Uncle Drufus. Uncle Drufus. I'm, I'm still everyone's uncle. Uncle Drufus. Yeah, he's everyone's uncle, and he is apparently fisting uncle. a fisting uncle. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> so today on this episode of Anime on Draft, um, we have another stout. So Alec, you chose this beer today. Why don't you go ahead and uh, lead us through it? Um... So, yeah, I was rolling around Sprouts and was like, yo, I need to pick a beer. So I went over to the beer section and I saw this Samuel Smith's organic chocolate stout. And I was thinking, hmm, I will try it because just a couple of days ago I had the Samuel Smith's uh, oatmeal stout and dude, it was very good. It tasted dude, good. I, oh, I love I that, bought that stout. Of, I bought both of them and I drank that before we did this and it was okay hand emoji. Yeah, it's really good. Um, Samuel Smith's stouts, people, get them. They're really yeah. good. So the oatmeal stout I had just a couple of days ago, got it, saw this at the store and was like, oh, fuck, if that one was so good, then uh, I'll try this one. Checked you guys' BevMo, saw that it was available at both, picked it up, and here we are. Also, we, it's raining like crazy where I am, so a stout sounds good. And we mm. haven't had one in a while. So boom, there, reasons. <laughs> right. Um, so why don't we go ahead and take a sip? Ooh, that smells good. Yeah, it smells like dark chocolate. <laughs> I don't know, milk chocolate. It's probably dark wow. chocolate. Oh. Dare I dare I say this is better than the Belching Beaver version? The Belching this Beaver chocolate good. stout? Yeah. Ooh, this is really good. It's like so this, holy <laughs> this tastes like like you're drinking a hot chocolate, but it's not hot. It's, it's a cold beer. And holy shit. Beer. It's so good. This is delicious. It's oh my so god. Good. <laughs> I mean, I've had the oatmeal stout from Samuel Smith, and that's really good. But so I had that. They have done us wrong because we're all going to drink this well before we're done. <laughs> <laughs> I had that before we recorded, and I thought it was really good. Like I saw oatmeal stout. I hadn't had an oatmeal stout in a while. It sounded good, so I drank that. And I'm like, yeah, it's it's pretty, it's pretty good. It it wasn't like my favorite, but drinking this, like, holy shit, like, mm-hmm. this is so good. It's really good. Yeah, their oatmeal stout. Um, it was good. I think I've had a better oatmeal stout, but I remember drinking it and thinking, well, tastes like an oatmeal stout and it's not bad. Um, I definitely, I think I'd give the oatmeal stout like a three and a half, 3.75 out of five. Mm. Um, but this is dope. Yeah. This is really good. And Rolanda, you mentioned you were going to make a float out of this. That would be an excellent idea mm-hmm. because it if would taste ice cream. so good. Yeah. What type of ice cream are you going to use? Mint chocolate chip. Oh, my God. Ooh. <laughs> God, I want that now. Oh. I'm going to the store. I'm going to buy another <laughs> bottle. <laughs> buy another mint bottle. chocolate chip ice cream. <laughs> I don't care. I'll call a taxi if I have to. I'll walk. It's pouring rain and I'll fucking walk. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, there's a liquor store near you, right? So, Yeah, if I it's, can find it, the beer. <laughs> it's only... I mean, I guess it's pretty it's a pretty sizable like, distance for you to walk it's like almost half a mile yeah <laughs> in the pouring rain, in the pouring rain. <laughs> good thing uh, i just bought a golf umbrella oh, so yeah. we're set <laughs> so um this beer the <clears throat> color it's very like very dark it's really dark it's like 
pitch black. Mm-hmm. Mine it has a nice has, contrast with the head, though. Yeah. Yeah, and mine has like awesome legs. Like the whole thing is just gripping onto there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it for me it leaves like a big, like um, wall of foam. Yeah, for legs. Yeah. yeah, it's just it. It's really cool. It's got when you tilt it against the glass and pull it down, it has like the cool bubbles in the in the legs, and they stick around. It leaves it. It is definitely an appealing beer. The 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 head is like a coffee cream color almost, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, is what I'd kind of say. Yeah. And it smells like delicious dark chocolate. Like I know a lot of people, it's like dark chocolate's hit or miss, but this smells like really dark chocolate, and I love dark chocolate. I mean, and dark chocolate so smells really good, though. So <laughs> even if you don't like it, it smells dope. It has a very this is good condensed chocolate taste. You know, mm -hmm. like but it doesn't it doesn't taste artificial chocolate. It tastes like good chocolate and i don't like chocolate that much and this is like it's like drinking a milkshake almost yeah it's super creamy and it's a little fizzy but still like really smooth um it doesn't the the fizziness doesn't like it doesn't hit your tongue and and you know how sometimes when you have a really fizzy beer it kind of like breaks up the mm -hmm. flavor because it's so fizzy mm -hmm. it doesn't do that it's just smooth across your tongue yeah, it's got that dope mouth feel. <clears throat> yes. Dope mouth dope. mouth feel. Dope. dope. Um it's super malty too. Yeah. Um, super malty. But it's balanced. It's balanced yeah. though. Yeah. Yes. I I'd also say it's toasty rather than roasty. Mm -hmm. Um I have to say oh, that no. for for a stout that's very, I guess Con it not like concentrated because like it does have a concentrated like chocolate taste but it's very like chocolate forward there's not a lot of mm -hmm. the other elements of the stout in it it's actually really good and it's like it's very easy to drink for sure but like it's not mm. like the kind of simplicity that and sweetness that makes you get tired of it easily which right. is like I think it's that's like really good for something like this. This sweet. <laughs> yeah. For sure. It's and then I think it's because so like you said, it's really chocolate forward. So you take a sip and the first thing that hits you is that that chocolate taste, but then pretty quickly after comes in that toasty malt like flavor and it hits you in the back of the tongue. Um and so it kinda balances out the sweetness of the chocolate forward flavor at least for me and yeah. then it's smooth the whole way so i think toasty is like a really good way to describe it too it, it almost has like that toasted marshmallow kind of kind of feel to it but it's not like that awful toasted marshmallow that we had before <laughs> like this is actually like good oh <laughs> so. yeah that God, you just reminded me that that I fucking about that that marshmallow beer. stout tasted so bad yeah, was not that good. was like artificial flavors and so much sugar and awfulness. <laughs> this is like totally balanced and delicious. Hey, if we throw marshmallows into this pit of beer, will it taste good? No, because marshmallows are made with sugar and artificial crap. Yeah, well, let's try it anyways. Okay, good idea. Delicious. Fucking awful. Yeah. <laughs> well, <Yep>. stupid. Um, <laughs> we've kind of uh, gone over our initial impressions, so why don't we go ahead and rate it? Um, Alec, let's start with you since you chose it. What would you give this beer? Excuse me. Um, so if you couldn't tell from all of our first impressions, this shit is dope. Um, excuse me. Really good. Um, flavorful, smooth. I definitely rank it at the top of stouts that I've drank in general. I think it's just slightly below the Zumbark chocolate, uh, coffee chocolate stout. Cause I still, from what I, I'm going to have to drink them side by side someday yeah, because they are, this is on par with that. 
Um, so I, I think it, I, before I say it's below it, I'll I'll just say it's it's pretty much on par. But I want it. Th- what I remember of the other one was a little bit. I liked it a little better, but I'm still going to give this a 4.75 because I think it deserves it. Good mouthfeel, good color, contrast with the head, good legs, excellent flavor, very well balanced. And like Rolando said, uh, you it's not the type of stout that you drink one and you're like, all right, I'm over it. You could definitely drink this whole bottle easily and then mix it with ice cream if you want and a whole <laughs> ton of other shit. stuff. How yeah. So, How would you compare it to the Belching Beaver peanut butter stout? I like this better. Okay. And for a long time, the Belching Beaver was my favorite stout. Um, but then it was the Zumbar chocolate coffee stout. And uh, that's now this probably knocked that into the third. So we got to do a we got to do a triple taste test. A triple taste. So fucked up. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> this one, though, this one's only 5%, but those other two are like 9 and 10%. Yeah, yeah. They are yeah. strong. This one's your... <laughs> this one's five. Your uh, session stout, although I don't know if you ever mm-hmm. want to drink more than no. one bottle of a stout. Um, yeah, you'd get pretty full. You'd get pretty full and fat. So, uh, yeah. Drew, <laughs> what, what do you think about this one? Well, Alec, you'll be proud of me. I'm starting to mm. come around to stouts a little bit more. Woo! Um, like I got that oatmeal stout and it was good. Yeah, um, dude. This this is delicious. They're excellent. Um, as long as you don't get like a marshmallow stout, then don't you know, do it. We, we've done we've done pretty well on stouts in this show. Although that asylum uh, that we had was not not just good. leave the stout choices to me. <laughs> all right. Yeah, leave that's, them to that's me. clearly that's clearly <laughs> what it needs to be. Um, and then I also had like this Elysian, uh, we've had Elysian beer, uh, before on the podcast, but we've done like the IPA. Um, but they have a stout, um, that I looked at and, and that was also very good. Um, so you'll, you'll be proud of me. I'm expanding beyond the IPAs. Um, oh, good. but in, in terms of this beer, for all the reasons we said, it's, it's excellent. Um, I'm going to give it up 4.5, uh, very, very good. Four point five. Right wow. Um, yeah, I'm surprised. I'm surprised yeah. too. Yeah. Woo. Um. So Taking, I'm. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm. I'm kind of with you guys on this. The, I still like the Zumbar better, but this is also a very good stout. Um, if I remember correctly, mm-hmm. I think I also gave the Zumbar a four seven five. Um, in retrospect. Um, I probably would have given it a five, but I think I gave it a five. Um, either way, I think this beer is good. I do think the Zumbar personally, um, in terms of like the palate, I enjoy that set of flavor flavors, the combination better than this one, but I do think this is very good and I will for sure get this again. It's only like a for four dollar fifty bottle at Sprouts, so mm-hmm. um, four dollars and forty nine cents. <laughs> it's it's definitely a good deal for what you get, and it's like you know five percent, which is like pretty standard. But um, mm-hmm. sometimes you don't want like too much alcohol. Sometimes you're not trying to get schweisty. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'm gonna I'm gonna give this a four and a half. Um, it's solid, good. I like it. I'm gonna drink it again. And uh, I'm sure the both of you will too. Yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. Do you do you guys remember what I gave the Zumbar? <clears throat> no. No. Was we'll have to go back though? and look. We would have to. We would, we would have to like check one. the archives. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to go through our. Yeah. I don't probably, and you gave like it. A, you gave it like a easy. one or something. Like it was. Yeah. 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 A point two. You gave point it like. Five. You gave it some. You gave it a very bad score. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I do have to say one thing about this. The, as stouts go, the flavor profile of it is relatively simple. Yes. For, for That's a stout. True. Yeah. Um, which is a nice change. It's not super complex like many stouts, but, uh, and it's low alcohol. It's very and British. That That's part very of British. the reason why I rated the Zumbar so high was that it was a very simple yet efficient, effective, um, Mm-hmm. It was flavor chocolate. Profile. It was coffee, and it was toasty. and it was, and it was stout. 
It was chocolate. It was, it was coffee. It was stout. <laughs> mm. <laughs> three. And it was strong. Three, three <laughs> flavors. <laughs> that one's like a nine. I think that one's like 9.25% or something. That one's pretty yeah. strong. All right. So um, now that we've kind of gone over the beer, a new anime season has started. <laughs> so what have you guys yes. watched? Um, I see Drew, you've watched... The Rio's work is never done. What what show is this? This is about, and I'm not going to describe it the way I described it to you guys earlier. Thank God. Um, <laughs> I was like, it please is, describe it normal. <laughs> <laughs> it is about a 16 year old shogi prodigy, <laughs> and uh, he's like won the highest rank of shogi masters um, <laughs> in Japan at the youngest age, and. Um, he acquires a nine-year-old apprentice who is going to learn from him. Uh, and that's kind of what we got in the first episode. It was just introducing characters and things like that. Um, but the animation quality is excellent. Um, it's, it, it seems like it'll be, it'll be a good show. Um, there's enough drama and, and things going on. Um, and I think all the character design, um, with the characters they introduce as well as the characters that they show, um, in the opening and things like that is well done. Um, it makes me intrigued to see their shogi play styles and things like that. Mm -hmm. So I think this will be a good one. Um, so yeah, um, it's good so far. Episode one. Okay. Um, I was looking for it on my anime list and then realized that um, it was labeled as Ryuo no Oshigoto. So, um, mm -hmm. it looks like it has a above seven rating so far. I, I love how people on my anime list decide that they're going to rate a series based off of one episode. <laughs> <Yeah>. Um, <laughs> so, uh, that sounds interesting. Um, it sounds very similar to, well, it's not very similar, but like, it's got a similar, like prodigy shogi prodigy um aspect like sangatsu no lion which um alec are you gonna be watching watching that second yeah season? i uh i caught up on because i didn't know that this the beginning i guess the first part of the second season aired um i missed it so i've been catching up the past couple days i have one more episode left in what's aired so far and then i will be watching it live -o. So, oh yeah nice i am super Indeed. far behind on that show <clears throat> yeah um i'm still I like do suggest watching it i'm like four episodes but, yeah. back on like the the second half of the first the season first. yeah um so i essentially have like a full season it's worth you do um yeah. <laughs> so it's really good if that helps anything yeah what, what i remember from it it was that it was good um so who's next? Um, I guess I can talk a little bit about Yuru Camp, which is basically a uh, slice of life about camping, high school girls going camping. It reminds me a lot of um, Hinako Note in the way that it kind of started off. So like a pink haired new girl that's kind of ditzy moves into a new town and ends up meeting this girl that's like um that camps a lot and like this new girl is kind of similar to Hinako from Hinako Note but um she's just like more of a ditzy airhead character um rather than someone with a personality or not personality but like a <laughs> A weird thing where she turns into a scarecrow when she, you know, sees other people. But um, yeah. it yeah. so so far I've been like the first episode I enjoyed. It's the kind of slice of life that um is like the first episode was good because it makes something like the idea of, you know, just like high school girls camping. Like they, they took that idea and they 
like made it interesting. So not a lot of people like slice of life, but I like watching slice of life because a well executed slice of life takes something that it's not necessarily like an overarching plot um, per se, like most other um, episodics are. It basically turns each episode into its own contained story. And if you can make, you know, simple things in life interesting, you know, like just simple experiences into an interesting story on a per episode basis, then um, it shows like very, it shows like that the the staff is doing a good job because it shows that they, the director knows how to direct a, um, an episode. It shows that the this- the screenwriter knows how to um, craft an interesting story out of nothing. And then the animation has to be done well. The voice acting has to be done well. So it's like kind of like a collaboration of, you know, everybody putting in their own work to make something that you could say would be mundane. It's not always mundane stuff, but it it makes them interesting, you know. Mm-hmm. I'm super picky with my slice of life. So like it, like there's so many of them, and so many of them are bad, and so it it makes it hard to pick between them and like which ones you want to watch and things like that. Um, I know like some of the recent ones we've had like New Game and um, what was another one I was thinking? Oh, Rabbit Cafe and and things like that. They they, they kind of take it to a new level just because the animation is so good, kind of like what you're saying, the voice acting is good. Um, there is an overarching story, but for the most part, each episode is self-contained. And so because of that, you have to have good execution, kind of like you were saying, in order to make it sort of watchable, because uh, otherwise it just becomes like randomness that isn't entertaining. Um, so that's that's where like my stance is kind of on slice of life. So if if, if they can do all those things, they're great. And if they can't, they're really bad, <laughs> in my yeah. opinion. Um, I mean, your camp, like the first episode was pretty good. Um, I would say that it's more along the lines of slice of life, kind of like Hinako note, but without the kind of backlying plot just in terms of style, but like, it's also kind of similar to, um, non, non beery in my opinion. Mm. So, um, it's, if you, if you're not a big fan of slice of life, then it may not be your cup of tea. But if you do enjoy something like non, non beery, which I find to be like a very strictly slice of life show, it is not, um, it doesn't really have any other like um, categories attached to it. Kind of like new game, which is Kinero, also Kinero mosaic is kind of like what you're talking about too. Yeah. So it's, but like, even then, like those are mo- mostly comedy. Uh, like they're mm-hmm. kind of in the comedy genre. Um, but this is more strict slice of life. Like uh, non, non beer is. So mm-hmm. if you're not a fan of that, then you may not like it. But if you do like that, then I'd say give it a watch. So, um, I'm going to give the first episode a try, but we'll see. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Alec, you saw Soriori Motoi Basho. What, uh, mm-hmm. um, what did you think about this show? It's about girls going to Antarctica. <laughs> oh, no. Um, I actually, I did like the first episode. Um, they did a good job of kind of making this this girl who who is kind of shunned from everybody because she has this dream to find her lost mother who was lost in on an uh, expedition to Antarctica. And uh, so she's been saving money to go to Antarctica to go find her. And the main character girl who we meet at the beginning has always ran away from doing anything or going on an adventure or as she writes in her diary, um, getting the most out of youth. She's always kind of been too afraid. And, uh, so 
<clears throat> we see her kind of taking the steps to go along with this girl and go on a ad- completely unplanned adventure. And uh, it's definitely going to be one Too of those coming of age stories. And uh, But the art is good. So far, the storylines have been good. And I do like the characters they've introduced. So I think it's going to be a good show um, from what I can tell. I'll keep watching it and keep you guys updated. So I'm probably going to yeah, take a look at this. It is done by Madhouse. So um, <clears throat> I know it's not the same Madhouse that of old, but still um, it looks interesting. Um, so I guess the last on the slate of stuff we've watched, um, I did see the first episode of Ramen Daisuke Koizumi-san and it's kind of like love is like a cocktail, but not, not the same. So short, no, it's a full half hour episode, but they, it's basically like they explain to you like different ramen. So like the first episode first introduces the characters, like the two main characters. And then, um, like later I would say skits. I don't know. Like they're part, like they're like, you could tell it's, um, like there's separate little stories, like contained stories that like come from the, the manga itself. And, they kind of try to explain what different types of ramen are. So it's interesting. I found it very interesting to like learn about um, different types of ramen. And I'm probably going to watch it just because of that because I like ramen. But Because ramen's delicious. <laughs> yeah. In, in, in terms of the story itself and the characters, it's kind of, you know, meh. It's kind of a... It's one of those slice of life's that I don't think has really anything going for it other than the fact that it's got an interesting topic. <laughs> so, um, do, uh, do they draw the ramen as well as they draw food in Shogugeki? Um, they, they draw it pretty well, I have to say. Okay. So it, it's going to make me hungry. It, I got... I, I, I mean, I saw some stuff and I was like, man, that looks pretty good. Uh, but it's not the <laughs> same level as Shokugeki for sure. Okay. You know what okay. show used to make me really hungry when I watched it? The um, the one where this, the father and the daughter are learning to cook. Because oh, the Sweetness and Lightning. Died. Sweetness and Lightning. Yeah. That show, that I really always good. had to be eating. I had to be eating while I did it because they would talk about everything in it and it made me so hungry. I was like, oh God, I'm so speaking, hungry. Speaking of good slice of life, if you want a good slice of life, that's a good one. That show, I'm, I've am i watched a couple slice of life and I didn't really like them. I, so I think it really depends for me. It's got to be excellent. And that one, I actually really enjoyed that show. That one was excellent. I think I finished the whole season in like three days or something like that. Maybe um, probably less. Like I think, I, think so. I finished most of it in a couple days and then I didn't have the last couple episodes cause I got busy or something. That like was that. when you were still in your binge phase of anime. Yeah. I was binging Eat. everything, <laughs> everything. <laughs> and, and it was ridiculous. I think I watched like 16 animes in like a month. Or yeah. Something. Because like you, like More. I was watching it when it was airing and I was like, yeah, this show's pretty good. Like, I don't know if you like Slice of Life, but you should watch it. And then you caught up to where it was, like, currently airing. I was like, damn, dude. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> I was like, yeah, I'll give it a shot. And then I just watched the entire thing. I was yeah, like, but so that was hungry. on top of the other shows you were watching at the time. Yeah, the other shows I was binging. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Binge yeah. So um, why don't we go ahead and move on to what we're going to plan on watching for the season i know we briefly covered it in the last episode but we can kind of talk a little bit more in depth so drew uh what are you going to be watching or looking forward to like you don't have to necessarily keep watching it but what are you interested in watching uh first off uh ancient magus's bride i am currently catching up on it 
So I watched the first three of like the preview and now I'm on like episode three of uh, the actual last season. So what did uh, you think of the first three? Yeah, they were great. I have to ask. They were excellent. I mean, the animation quality was fantastic. The story was dope. Um, Glasses bro got bit in half and it was tight. Glasses bro. Um, He's so uh, cool though. I love glasses. Yeah, man. and like uh, you know, he gives her the book, and she go gives it to the uh, Obasan, and she's like, "I'm so thankful," and uh, nothing happened, and it was great. Um, <laughs> no, but it, it's it's a super cool premise. Uh, I enjoy it. I'm I'm curious to see is where it's going to go because I haven't seen much of like where the actual plot is. Uh, I'm sure it's coming up. But uh, in terms of just execution, style, music, um, all of the above, it is an excellent show. Um, I should have watched it earlier. I'm dumb. Uh, so I will be catching up on it. And that's something that I think we'll definitely be talking about. Uh, definitely don't listen to season. our shots because it's major <laughs> we, spoilers. We will, it will definitely spoil it. <laughs> it's like major well, I, spoilers. I, I, won't, I, won't, I won't do that then. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But uh, the other show um, that I'm looking forward to, because I, I feel like this anime season is kind of bleak for me. Um, there isn't much that I'm interested in unless you guys can convince me otherwise. I'm not watching Girls Go to Antarctica. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but uh, the uh, Hakata Tonkotsu Ramen, another ramen show. Um, this one seems like a murder mystery type of noir show. Um, and so I'm kind of looking forward to that. It doesn't air until, uh, the 12th. The 12th. So yeah. we'll, uh, we'll see how that goes, I'm but probably uh, going to watch that one too, but yeah, there's yeah. four more days. I'm going to give a, a lot of these like a one episode mm-hmm. run and then some of them, the three episode mm-hmm. rule, but mm-hmm. there, there's, there are certain ones that I'm just like, I don't know if I would give it more than an episode. Um, anything else drew besides, uh, Besides, no, uh, nothing, uh, nothing else like was jumping out at me. Next spring, spring is going to be ridiculous. Um, yeah, there's right. going to be so many shows in the spring, but like this, this winter season, it's it's not I mean, really, you don't really do it. You me. need a calm before the storm, you know. Yeah, that's true. But spring like, is going to be, be crazy. There's going to be so <laughs> many shows in the spring. Like holy shit. We're going to have um, to split it up and just do like a series of shots. <laughs> just, yeah, I, I think like we'll concentrate on like the main ones and then do shots on the rest. But man, spring is going to be sick. Uh, winter uh, for me, not so much. Um, I, I know when like the the shows start or whatever, and I read the synopsis, like not a lot of things look interesting to me. Like Little Sister or A Sister's All You Need was one of those for me. And then like one of my friends or like you guys watch this in so you need to watch the show so maybe there will be something like that for me here but from just reading the synopsis it, it nothing is really yeah just reading like the synopses of uh what's on my anime list i think the one you specifically want to watch is uh uh need you go sai no joshi kose so this one's a romance story that centers around Hana Natori, an earnest, good-natured 25-year-old woman whose cousin refuses to go to high school. And you know what she does after that? She takes her place in high school. Oh, shit. I think, dude, I think (laughs) that's your show. 25-year-old woman? Yeah. 25-year-old woman. Maybe I'll I'll watch that one. Maybe Dude, that's that way that, illegal. That does, that does, that does yeah. sound kind of sick. Yeah, and she's then gonna she's going to get a high school boyfriend and yeah. then fuck him, and it's going to be super illegal. Yeah, it's going to be so illegal. It's going to be a scandal. Holy shit. Um, <laughs> holy shit, <laughs> Dude, Alec. that's super meta. That's super meta. They're like going after what's happening in the media right now. Wow, that's amazing. Good, good for them. Really good for them. Excellent, excellent um, <laughs> way to bring light to the situation. So, Alec, what are you planning on watching <laughs> this season? <laughs> um, so I'm gonna watch the new season of Sedli- Seven Deadly Sins. Um, that one's coming out on Netflix, and I think it's coming out on like the 13th or something yeah january 13th supposedly i think it's coming out on netflix right i don't think it'll be on crunchyroll yes. it's a um the netflix claims it is a netflix original series <laughs> it's not um <laughs> i'm also gonna be watching black clover season two i watched the first season excuse me it was fun to watch um a lot like of you said i'm gonna be watching ancient Magus bride 
I'm probably going to watch the first couple episodes of the Hakata Tonkotsu Ramen show. That one looked interesting. I'm going to continue watching March Comes In Like a Lion. And then the art style of Violet Evergarden looked really interesting. So I kind of want to give it a shot and see um, what that one's all about. Because I just from like the picture that I've seen, it looks really good. Really cool. So so what you're saying is you like KyoAni animation style. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I am also looking to watch Violet Evergarden. Um, KyoAni, if you disappoint, then I am disappoint. Um, <laughs> I'm probably going to got an 8.91, dude. Yeah, it hasn't even fucking come <laughs> one, out after yet. one episode. It hasn't even it hasn't even aired. Oh yeah, it's it airs on the eleventh. <laughs> yeah, but it has an eight point nine one rating already <laughs> with zero episodes. <laughs> um, I'm also looking forward to the second season of Seven Deadly Sins. I guess it's technically a third season because Netflix put a four episode second season. What they're yeah. claiming season. Um, it's probably just like a series of OVAs that they just didn't know how to, um, call it, call it, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I'm probably going to look at that Antarctica one. No. Um, I'm going to watch it and then Join me. I'm going to watch Dagashi Kashi season two. I'm gonna keep watching Euro. I, wa- I want to watch. I want to watch that, but I haven't watched season one. Then you should watch it. Um, yeah, it's also slice if, of if, life. If, if nothing else, if no, I it's I, a season I've of like slice seen, of life. Yeah, I've seen like excerpts from the show of season one, and it's one that I have on my backlog. And so, if nothing else like does it for me this season, that I'm gonna catch up on that one as well and, and watch that. Um. I'm trying to see. I'm probably do they have a sadistic character in that. Do, did you say do they it's have sadistic. a sadistic character? No. Yeah. Don't or don't they have? Isn't the the like purple the haired light purple haired chick? No. She, like, sadistic he's not well? sadistic. Wow. <laughs> the memes, uh, the memes lied to me then. Um, if any, if anyone's sadistic, it's probably the fucking uh the brother glasses uh, glasses girl. The yeah, it, it it's it's a pretty hilarious show. So, um, I would I would give it a shot. Is Micah in it? No. Fuck. Um, I can't. I mean, I'm obviously gonna watch continue watching, uh, Ancient Magus's Bride, and then I will probably you know take a look at some of these shows, just like give them the one episode run over, like Tonkatsu Ramen. There's so many ramen anime. Like what the like? What's going right. on with this? Ramen's blowing up, dude. It's Ramen's like, like holy shit, ramen. Exploded. They're like, we have to market to outside of Japan. We have to encapsulate on this market of people that love ramen. <laughs> <laughs> dude, ramen has kind of. It feels like ramen has been blowing up relatively recently outside of Japan, just in the United States. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, or at yeah. least in Southern California. I don't really see anything else on this list that is catching my eye. So yeah. spring season. It's it's the season of slice of life. And even then there's like two shows. So it's the season of, hey, can we make this easily? Because we have something crazy that we're spending all our money on in spring. Probably. <laughs> um. <laughs> Low budgets. The season of low budgets. <laughs> yes. So Ooh. why don't we uh, move on? So uh, as you may all know, Awesome Games Done Quick 2018 is occurring currently. So uh, I- Drew, you've been watching this. I haven't had a chance to watch any of it because of work. But um, how has it been so far? There's been a lot of controversy. Um, first controversy is they put the chat in sub only mode for the entirety Ooh. of the marathon, and people yeah. are really upset about it. And not only are they upset about that, but there were multiple like meme channels, like 
there was like AGDQ um, pleb chat and Twitch banned them, and then there was like ADGQ like uh, they named it another variation of plebs or whatever, and like multiple multiple channels got banned. Um, so there's a lot of controversy about that. Um, I'm not gonna get into like all the drama, but basically last uh, GDQ. There was a bunch of emotes spammed about members of the community that were transgender and oh. spam emotes that the transgender people did not like to see. And so basically as fallout because of that, they decided to avoid all that drama and do sub only mode. Um, we'll see if it affects the donations. Um, I know a lot spam. of... Uh, yeah, and and like they they still do spam, and there's still a lot of like it's Twitch chat, so they're with like a hundred thousand plus people in it, so there there there's going to be a lot of uh, hate speak and things like that. But I feel like when you're calling it attention to it like that, it's just gonna make it worse on you. So why even bother? Just just let it be free. Um, that's my opinion on it. But uh, in terms of the actual marathon. Um, I was talking to a bunch of people about this and they really need to hire like a professional host or like an esports host or like Riot's esports division or something like that to do some of these interviews to fill some of the downtime because the people that they have doing it currently are not professionals and you can tell and it's super awkward. It's super mm-hmm. like hard to watch and cringy and just like really bad so that's that's my big opinions on where i think um the gdqs need to go will they go that route i doubt it um they've stuck with kind of the same people for years (laughs) but uh it's just the production like the the overall stream layout and that production like sound quality things like that is good it's just like the cringiness of weird speed running people um, wow. the community is weird. It's, it's, it's very <laughs> weird and the people are very awkward and that is like who a lot of the majority of these runners are and they need all of someone them? there. Yeah. Like all of them. And they need someone there who is like a professional <clears throat> to kind of get them to open up a little bit and ask them the appropriate questions, um, to get them to not sound so awkward and weird, but that's. That's a whole other issue. But so overall, I'm the, actually going to re- agree with you uh, <laughs> that they need to get some sort of professional interview team. Like you watch this expecting the runs to be cringe and awkward and you watch it and you're like, yes, I want to see that in the run. But when you see the interview, you're you just watched an hour and a half of cringy runs now you kind of want something just like, hey, we're going to sit down and ask these questions. If they have a professional who's, you know, comfortable, yeah, they might be uncomfortable, but they'll be able to diffuse the situation because they're professional. They know what they're doing. They know they've been in those situations before, just like with a lot of league players who are really uncomfortable talking on the camera. Mm-hmm. The people still, they have interviewed and know what they're doing. Camera, though. <laughs> they're still <laughs> awkward on camera, but like you have the other person kind of diffusing that a little bit and yeah. it makes it way and, less and they, cringy to watch. They did that um, at the international with Dota. They brought in a third party. Her name is Casey and she was a news anchor and a news reporter Casey and Trump? they brought her and, and she, she knew nothing about Dota, but she was able to make these players at least sound like not really fucking weird mm-hmm. and like stupid she like was asking them like real questions and it made it like a lot more enjoyable to watch and i feel like this marathon could really really benefit from that because it's it's so hard to watch like it's hard to watch the run sometimes because these people are so fucking weird and then you try to throw in this production of oh let's interview them now and you're just like mute i can't even listen to this because it's so stupid um, so get, get rid of all like the transgender, like hate speak. Nobody hates transgenders. You know, you do what you're going to do and chat is going to spam regardless because it's Twitch chat. Like don't take it personally. Sorry. Um, get rid of that. Let the, let the plebs free in chat and get somebody professional to interview these people because it's, it's an embarrassment. Honestly, like you're raising millions of dollars and having to sit and watch this is kind of uncomfortable so that's my opinion on it the runs are cool though there's a lot there's been a lot of runs that are really good the uh, ratchet and clank run this year uh, was excellent um right now in the background i have resident evil 7 going on and it looks like it's really cool i love that game 
Um, there's been a there's been a lot of good runs, so definitely definitely check it out and uh, support because it does it does go to a good cause. That's that's what it's all about in the end is uh, supporting charity. <clears throat> I can understand them putting it in sub mode with a delay just because 145 100 what is it right now 145,000 people watching at one yeah, time like does get really spammy. I can see it for that reason. If it's for the reason of like limiting hate speech, it's going to happen. That's anyways. what it is. People are going to have prime is. speech. <clears throat> like people are going to have prime subs anyways and they're going to be like, "Oh, well, it's free to me technically. I'll just sub and then spam what I'm going to spam anyways." So at the, like AGDQ always felt like something. It, it's kind of like a thing of inclusion. They're including all the transgender people. They're including all the, you know, dip people of different, you know, lifestyles and beliefs and all that shit. And like, yeah, hate speech sucks. But if you're banning, like for me, I, I don't sub cause I can't sub. So, but I don't get to chat anymore. So I feel yeah. excluded in, in essence. So you're excluding a lot of people who had nothing to do with that. And it's not really doing anything because the people who really want to do something and be a dick are just going to use their prime sub and be a dick. Um, They're going to do it. And anyway, so yeah. well, they probably I don't, they don't want, they probably don't have the staff to um, just keep, cause like it's already, it yeah. used to be in slow mode, but they probably don't have the, st- like the, like a set, staff of mods and like auto mods that will kind mm-hmm. of keep the hate well, speech at, at the end of the at the end of the day just don't moderate it like if you don't want to look at chat don't look at chat yeah i mean it is like uh it is the internet everyone hides behind the mask of anonymity <clears throat> but mm-hmm. i mean i mean yeah it i can i can I see why to... why people are gonna be offended by that because they like it's it's the type of thing where uh, unless it's something that directly affects you you may not really understand how how they feel about it so like i i can get that you know a lot of people are upset about it and and they may even lash out at certain communities more but i can also see the fact that some people don't want to see that kind of um, language, but I can also understand the point that if you don't want to see it, just don't look at chat, but that's what I subscribe to. It's like, if you're not in chat for the memes, like why are you even reading chat, especially with the chat that big? So if, if you don't want that, close it and be done with it. You don't have to limit everybody because chat's going to be chat, mm-hmm. especially with a hundred thousand plus people. They're going to, they're going to spam and they're going to be crazy. Um, so if you don't want that and you don't like that, then then mute it. Oh. Um, what what I guess I don't appreciate, and I, I can see where this kind of comes into play, is people then going to Twitter and like spamming someone's Twitter and stuff like that. Maybe that's a little bit too far, but even then, you know, private your Twitter. You don't have to see that and and go about your business. Um, I mean, I can I can see all. I can see how like the official AGDQ channel does not want to be seem like it's responsible for breeding some sort of hate speech so Mm. it's like they're trying to do like do something for a good cause so i totally understand why they did it but i can understand also why a a lot of people are very upset about it so i see uh we'll see at the end of the uh, marathon uh how the donation total is looking compared to other years and see if this is a mistake or not because I've talked to multiple people and they said they're not donating because of this reason. So I mean, we'll I, I, yeah. I, okay. Like so my, my counter argument to that, to donate. yes, the, exactly. Like I find that you're to not be a donating. Com- it's not because <laughs> you're not donating because you can meme in you're chat donating for cancer. And be, yeah. It's like supposed to be <laughs> like, for a good cause. And so if mm-hmm. that is your sole reason for donating, then man, you need to really rethink your or priorities. Not donating. Yeah, no. or yeah, that's and, what I and that's what, I'm gonna agree on. But that's what that's what people have said. I can't spam chat. I'm not donating. So we'll see how the uh, donation total. I mean, they uh, can spam the chat. End. They donate five dollars, or they subscribe five dollars for this next month, and then unsubscribe, and then they can spam all they want. Well, and then uh, one of the, one of the th- the clip Twitch clips I just saw too was uh, somebody donated a thousand dollars and they said for their incentive to put it towards uh, freeing the plebs, and then the. Uh, <laughs> announcer said Haha, no that's not gonna happen so it's like they're like pandering to it now so that's gonna be even worse <laughs> so 
Um, it's it's kind of a mess. Um, I think they need to get their act together in a couple different areas, but uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right. Well, um, last thing on slate. The runs have been good so far. Um, <laughs> yeah, watch the watch for the runs and donate for charity. <laughs> please just donate if you want to donate. Please do not make yeah. it a yes. political thing because that is not what AGDQ is about. AGDQ was started about. Yeah. No. Um, so, Alec, last mm-hmm. thing. You yeah. recently read A Silent Voice, the manga. So uh, yes, what were your thing. overall impressions on it? You can read? Yeah, I can read. So I'll, I'll give you a quick... Uh, I, I started this um, not last night, <laughs> but the night before, and I'm done today. So obviously I thought it was good um, because I read 63... Is it 63 chapters in nice. two days? Yeah. In in two evenings, I should say, yes. because and like the I first was, couple chapters are pretty hefty chapters. Nice. Yeah, they're uh there's some pretty big chapters. So I finished that in two days. It's very good. Um I hate a lot of the characters. <laughs> 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 but at the same time, they're necessary. Um, so like you sit there and you're like, God, these characters fucking suck but they are good plot devices and they push the story and they're they're that makes them sound kind of less substantial than they are calling them plot devices. But essentially every character in in manga or anime is a plot device. Um, And so it's definitely very good. Uh, If you like that kind of like, I don't, it touches on a lot of sensitive issues. There's a lot of drama it has like, you know, romance. If you like that sort of stuff, you would definitely like this manga. Um, <clears throat> you will hate some of the characters in probably most of them, except a few who just didn't get enough page time to hate or like. So they're just neutral. Um, but all in all, definitely a really good manga. Um, What's it I, about? It's about a deaf girl who goes to an elementary school and gets bullied and leaves. And oh, that the, had a uh, anime adaptation, right? Yes. It got uh, a movie. Kyo Annie right? made a movie that I'm probably oh, going to watch movie, later right? tonight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, I know, I know yeah. Yeah. yeah um, I'm going to watch it too. So it's about a deaf girl who goes into an elementary school and there's a kid in the elementary school who bullies her. And then she leaves. And after she leaves, basically he realizes that some way somewhere halfway through her being there he was actually being bullied and she was protecting him from it essentially so he goes to find this girl and then this romance develops and the friends come back together and there you go kind of a coming of like if you like deaf girls you should read katala shoujo okay that's not what (laughs) um i'm just gonna throw that out so um koi no katachi uh, initially I was recommended this manga by Mark who has been on our show and um, Twice now. <laughs> that night I started reading it ended up reading till like 5 a.m. and was like fuck and then finished it the next day so I know what that feels like Alec because I told you about yeah. that and then you did the exact same thing you told me about that and I was like I'm definitely not going to read this till 5 in the morning and then around 4.45 in the morning I was like fuck I need to go to bed and I closed my iPad and I uh, stopped reading and then the next morning I literally the next morning I woke up and I was sitting there drinking my coffee and eating my breakfast reading that manga and, uh, <laughs> and then good and then thing, I started doing I some read. stuff for school Yeah, good and thing you uh, can't read. then I finished my classes and then I came back and I finished the manga. So that's the, that's the story there. Well, it's good. I'm glad you enjoyed it because it is one of my favorite manga, even though a lot of the characters are very hateable. Um, and there are, you know, like there are plot like, uh, not inconsistencies, but like, you know, there are issues with the plot that you feel, they can elaborate more on certain characters and then kind of shorten down other parts that kind of dragged on. But 
for I feel like though you can never be a hundred percent satisfied yeah. with any manga. Just because there's always something as the reader, you're like, I wish they did this. And the author kind of goes, well, I know I could do more of this, but I feel as the author, I want more of this. And so, you know, for them, it's a personal choice. But Especially when it's like I serialized, understand. you know, every so often. Mm -hmm. You may not, unless you're very good at kind of crafting an overall direction of where it's going to go, then, mm -hmm. yeah. Well, moving on from that, um... If you are interested in checking out our third shot of Ancient Magus's Bride, Drew, don't listen to it because you'll get spoiled. I um, won't, don't, dude. I'm scared. Uh, that is, dude, you'll get real spoiled. <laughs> is now, now available. I'm scared. As well as uh, shots three and four for Just Because, um, of which we discuss the final couple of episodes in shot three and then our overall series impressions in shot four. So please check that out. Thank you to everybody who has been listening to our shots. They're kind of, they've kind of been the outlet that we've had as a group to cover shows that we don't necessarily cover in the podcast proper. So we need to do, um, and I say this, I think every week we need to finish, yeah. uh, you do. Fucking <laughs> <Blend>. <laughs> I think you've said that four weeks in yes. a row. Every We're going to do it. We're going to do it this weekend. <laughs> but, um, We're going to get drunk on whiskey and we're going to do it this weekend. <laughs> anyway. That'll be lit. Um, Thank you for everyone who has been listening. I do know that a lot of you has been have been listening to a the Ancient Magus Bride ones, so we will continue that mm -hmm. on to um, the next season, yes. whether that is continued in the shot form or whether we do it in the podcast proper. Um, that's something we will decide. But once we'll probably again, make a shot about it if we do change formats. Yes. <clears throat> um, but once again. Uh, thank you everybody for listening to us. Uh, we are anime on draft. I am Rolando and my co-hosts Alec and drew. You can find, yes, that is oh. you. You can find <laughs> our podcast as well as any other blogs and or shots, just whatever, all of our content on our WordPress, anime on draft.wordpress.com. We have a Twitter at anime on draft. If you have any suggestions or just want to say hi, go ahead and at us on Twitter or use our contact page on the WordPress. You can find us on SoundCloud, iTunes, and YouTube. Just search for Anime on Draft. And it's a pretty busy 2018, guys, so far. What are, you, uh, yeah. what are your last words? The WordPress will be updated soon. <laughs> okay. And I think... Uh, 31 we're... through 35. And we're caught up on YouTube, right, Alex? We are. Or yeah, you're are. uploading 35? 35, 35 um, will be done soon. <laughs> Today. Awesome. Yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.